in my steam engine playroom part 4. This is my second workshop and it is where I have a modest collection of model steam engines. What you see here have either been built or rebuilt from my customers or I just bought them in order to make these videos. Some of the models and parts were sent to me by customers to include in my video projects. The first part that I'm going to feature is from a very classy model steam plant and it's very well made. I'll just move the Stevenson rocket out of the way. There it is in the centre of the image, it's a water tower. This came all the way from California and it's part of a steam plant with an equally well made baseboard which is a bit of a work of art in itself. Looking in detail at this water tower, there's a lot of work being required to make this. All the pieces of wood are drilled, riveted and glued together. The small pipe at the side is a dummy. The main feed pipe to the pump goes down the centre. It is very accurately made. In particular, the two sets of ladders that run up the side. The cladding is held in position in quite a clever way. I'm not sure, but I think the main water tower part is made from plastic. On the steam plant is a similar part designed to hide the gas canister, and that's a plastic pipe. These are a nice touch. Believe it or not, they are turnbuckles. As you can see in this close-up shot, the wires are actually stuck to the wood, because otherwise they would fall off. The close-up shot of the ladder shows its construction, very accurately made, and the rungs are tubes. If you want to see the steam plant as it was originally, please type Model Steam Engines by David into YouTube. At this point I'd like to mention that I don't know who this chap called David is. I'm assuming that he must have sold the steam plant to my customer in the USA. Over the years I've built and torn apart quite a few double O gauge model railway layouts, the remains of which are in glass cases on the wall in the tea and coffee area of my recording studio. And this water tower, even though it's miles too big, would have looked really good on a miniature electric railway layout. These days I usually play with much larger steam engine things. And if you watch my channel regularly, I think you'll possibly agree with this. To the left of the water tower on the bench is this. It's a Stuart number 10 V. The V stands for vertical. On the original steam plant, from whence it came, it was used to drive a PM research generator. This thing really hurts my eyes. I don't like the colour of it, but that's nothing to do with it. I really hate the Mammod flywheel stuck on the other end of it as an afterthought. I've nothing against Mammod flywheels, providing they are on a Mammod steam engine. Stick one on a Stuart engine and it looks horrific. Things like this don't last long in my workshop. Here I'm removing it once and for all. Someone's taken the trouble to bore the centre out and then block up the other end. It is, of course, all a matter of personal taste. But this part at the moment is not compliant with my personal taste. The other flywheel's fine, it's cast iron, whereas the one in my right hand is made of an alloy. I quickly got rid of it. And now, instantly, the engine looks a lot better. A future project will be for me to rebuild this steam plant. Not just yet though because I'm too busy. One job I really have to get finished is the steam plant for my customer in the USA who sent me this lot. The first thing I'm going to do is see whether or not this engine runs. The other Stuart engine on the steam plant is a bright yellow S50 and I've worked on this in a previous episode which I then sent back to the customer. With the airline connected and about £20 per square inch showing on the compressor's regulator, I'm turning over the engine and it seems to be blowing quite a lot. But eventually it starts to run. And not unsurprisingly, the engine produces hardly any power. The S50 was the same as this. I would say there's something wrong with the valve timing and something wrong in the valve chest. The first thing I notice in this close-up is how much hair there is stuck to the parts of the engine. I'm assuming that one or maybe both of the owners had a hairy pet. Once I slackened off the grub screw holding the eccentric sheave to the crankshaft, I did notice that it was in the wrong place. That was a quick fix, I just put the eccentric sheave in the right position and tightened the grub screw. I always start with the largest lobe of the eccentric at 90 degrees to the crank pin. Let's see if it works. I'm rerunning this clip in slow motion, and as you can hear, the air has been admitted just before top dead centre at both ends of the stroke. 
the slide valve is still blowing, I will sort that out in the fullness of time. The running qualities of the engine are transformed and now there is plenty of power. And there will be even more when the slide valve moves correctly. This is a shot of some of the parts I have for this steam plant. Don't be confused with the engine in the foreground, that's a different steam plant. And the mammoth fuel tablets are nothing to do with this steam plant, I just left them in the picture by accident. The boiler is a PM research boiler, and here it is in position, but I'm very curious about this. It's a fire tube boiler, designed to be fired from the other end of it, but this one's fired from a gas burner underneath. The same customer sent me a complete set of parts for another PM research boiler pretty much like this one. Maybe I should have a look at the drawing for that other boiler to see what the firing arrangement is. It doesn't really matter though, the best thing about this steam plant in my opinion, apart from the water tower, is the baseboard. When I get round to building this steam plant, I'm going to fit a Stuart 501 boiler, which should look in scale with the plant and be much better than the one that's fitted to it. At least from a firing point of view. I really don't get the point of having fire tubes down the centre and a fire underneath. Fire tubes reduce the water capacity of the boiler, which is never a good idea. Fire tubes are, of course, a much better way of heating water in a boiler, but there's not a lot of point to them if you're just going to use it like a really simple pot boiler with a gas burner underneath. You must be wondering about the other steam plant in the picture. Well, here's a close-up of it. It's a Stuart No. 7A plant. This was also bought by a customer in the USA via eBay in the UK, and he had it sent to me. I fitted the Stuart pump at the request of the customer because I sold him the pump in the first place, and I also mailed the customer the reversing gear because he wanted to clean up the castings, and that was a bit of a saga. On the way back, the parts got stuck in customs. I think I'm going to end up with this steam plant. It's been sat in my lounge for the last 18 months or so, and the customer wants to do a deal on another engine that I have. I don't really want to do the deal, but I probably will do. And I will dismantle this steam plant because basically there's a lot of it I don't like. I do like the cast eccentrics though, and it does run beautifully. Which is more than I can say for the pump, because at the moment the shuttle valve is stuck. Nothing new there, it's very common. This is a good time to try and remove some of the dirt, grime and dust that's sticking to the engine from it being sat in my lounge for the last 18 months. Here's a bit of slow motion. The engine runs very well in both directions and the standard of engineering is excellent. You will notice that the pump isn't screwed to the baseboard. This was at the request of the customer. He wanted to fix it all down. And that is a good thing because I'm going to remove the pump and the associated plumbing extravaganza as well as the turret. And when I rebuild this steam plant, we'll also have a Stuart 501 boiler, because I have two of those. You may like to know that I did make, I think, a 34-part series about putting this steam plant together. Here is the Stuart 7A steam plant in steam on a very cold day in 2021. That's it for this video, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.